Hello again. Um, <clears throat> I have a problem. <laughs> I have two problems. The first one, this is going to take two minutes. The second one, I mean, I have therapy at 10 o'clock, so let's hope that it stops before then. <clears throat> so, first problem. When I have my microphone plugged into my laptop, I can't hear anything. Should I get one of those split headphone cords? And then just put headphones and then my mic? Or should I just stick with my headphones that have a mic? I don't know if this sounds better than the headphones that I have with a mic. But yeah. So, that was problem number one. Problem number two is going to take a, a little more than two minutes to explain. I live in the state of Wisconsin in the United States. And that is very important to what I am about to say. I'm going to explain what's going on and at the end I'm going to summarize it and ask you guys for help because I don't know what to do so before I got with my boyfriend he had two cats two orange house tabbies when we got together I wanted a dog he didn't want a dog yet so I got a cat I named the cat the cat is ours because we are together and you know I brought her home I gave her a bath and I noticed that she had fleas this was back in July Noticed she had fleas I went outside and I picked off every flea by the time we went to the vet the next day from when I got her she had one dead flea on her but she had ear mites and I was trying to clean it clean it out because it looked like she had scabs in the inside of her ears but Anyway, she was a rescue, okay? She, she had a lot of shit going on with her, and we had to fix it. And now, she's my little parrot kitty. Whenever I pick her up, boom, boom. That's where she wants to stay. Now, and she was born in April. A couple months later, I'm like, you know, babe, I want a dog. Babe, I want a dog. Babe, I want a dog. Okay. So, we're looking for dogs. And then, I, uh, I have a doctor's appointment. Routine doctor's appointment with my PCP, you know, um, personal care physician. That's what that stands for. Not the drug. I've never done it, but I, I know people who have done it and I, f I don't want to judge them, you know, but I feel like PCP has turned them into the person that they are, you know? Anyway, so <clears throat> routine appointment with my PCP. Remember, I want a dog, I want a dog, I want a dog. That's so good. Um, and I'm like, hey, who do I talk to about, you know, getting an OBGYN because I'm a grown-ass woman? Well, when was your last pap? Oh, it's, it's, been, it's been over a year. I mean, whenever my last UTI was, was my last pap. So she went to the system and she's like, yeah, it's been over a year. And I'm like, okay, so where do I go? And she's like, right here is fine. If you want, I could be your OBGYN. And I'm like, frick yeah. So she's my doctor. She's my family doctor. She's my OBGYN. If I have kids, she's going to be their doctor. I want my boyfriend to have her as a doctor, you know, because he wants kids. Anyway, so, you know, I'll be your, I'll be your OBGYN, like, do you want to check up now? And I was like, yeah, like I'm already here. Like, why not? So, you know, take your pants off, lay it back, put your feet in the air. Let me stick this thing inside of you. Wait a second. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> We've got a, a couple of abnormalities. So I'm just going to go ahead and swab these. Okay. So... I don't like cotton. I think it's called Sidon Globophobia. Q-tips, cotton swabs, cotton balls. Um, when you open up your pills, your over-the-counter pills, and they got that cotton ball thing in them, can't touch it, can't fake spider webs. No. No. So. <laughs> <sighs> So, you know, they take the huge cotton swabs and they just... <laughs> 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 anyway.
anyway, so, you know, they do the testing because they see some weird shit, you know, inside. And they're like, okay, go home. Babe, I want a dog, I want a dog, I want a dog. We start looking for dogs. I get a call. Somebody says the word pre-cancer to me, and I just like... <laughs> <laughs> and they're like it's okay it's not cancer yet it's just pre-cancer and i'm like don't tell somebody that you have pre-cancer over the phone and i don't have it anymore i'm i'm in remission or whatever they got it all out however in the moment being told you have pre-anything makes you feel like you're gonna get it right pre-diabetes you have to be very very careful or you're gonna get diabetes i don't know what the hell pre-cancer was apparently apparently i can't stick on topic so i'm gonna try to rush this along so the next thing that they had to do they were like okay we need to see how bad this pre-cancer is like so we got to do a biopsy <laughs> so they explained it to me you know we're just gonna put up a solution on the inside of your cervix and we're gonna wait until the cells start to start to what is it called when you do something and then something happens starts it starts to you know <laughs> what they didn't tell me was that the solution was iodine and vinegar okay I will never ever ever wish anybody vinegar in their hoo-ha the shit burned when they were doing it i was like oh my god it feels like you put a hot wing inside of me everybody was laughing you know i'm trying to make a joke because like yes i'm freaking the fuck out but there's like four doctors and nurses like right in front of me so if something were to go wrong like there's eight hands who can help so you know i puked they ended up doing the biopsy and basically what they did was take what looked like a very long staple remover and removed my biopsy like that they went it went like this and then she she said on three cough one two three <coughs> and instead of <coughs> it was <coughs> and they were laughing it was fun it in hindsight it was fun, but there it was like, I have to joke about this or else I'm going to freak out about this. There is no in between. But that night, the day that I was finished, Shay was like, hey, I got a surprise for you. What? We're going to go get your puppy. <gasps> my puppy? I get a puppy? She's going to be my cancer dog. <laughs> So literally the same day that I got this biopsy done, mind you, the biopsy was done. I was fully awake. I didn't take any painkillers outside of what I normally take. You know, I'm not, I, I didn't take any Tylenol or anything like that. So I was in a lot of pain. Like I couldn't walk right. I had to wear one of those hospital pads. Like no bueno. So anyway, we pick up this little bundle of joy. I don't know if you could see her, that little black spot on my, on my back. We picked her up, I house trained her. They told us that she had all these issues, this then the other. She had a chewing issue, but now it's like, I have some blankets that she can chew on so she can like pretend to dig. Right there, those are all her blankets. Wait, yeah, this is not, those are all her blankets, right there. You know, she's got her toys and things like that. and. So here's where the problem starts. I wanted to make Nova, my cat, and Willow, my cancer dog, I wanted to make them ESAs. The reason why is because I wanted, I wanted there to be, number one, legal ownership. Number two, I need my housing people to realize that we have frames we don't have frames we have two pets and two esas right right okay now they want me to do some sort of pet screening we just got new management like last month maybe the month beforehand and they want me to sign them up through pet screening and i'm like okay 
shaded his two cats, and then I did the ESAs because I'm not about to pay to make a profile. That's another reason why I wanted them to be emotional support animals because not only do they give me support, but I don't have the money. No, no. It would be, it would be $40 to make the profiles and an extra $40 a month per animal. That's not what we signed up on, the lease. So fine. I got letters from my psychiatrist. Bada boom, bada bam. It's great, right? You would think so, right? <laughs> nope. So, our, our lease runs out in either March or April. Okay. It's either the last day of March or the first or last day of April. I don't know. I never signed the lease and I don't have frames. So they want me to make these profiles. Okay. Oh, so I made the profiles. I made them under ESAs, which they are. Like I said, I have a doctor's note. Like, what do you want? Now, it keeps on coming back to me. They keep on rejecting my profiles. And they're saying that my letter of recommendation is not good enough. And I'm like, well, what the fuck do you want me to say? Like, I don't, I don't understand. And like the things that they're saying, they're, they're, I don't want to say they're hypocriting themselves, but it doesn't make sense. Like they say that you have to be specific but they say that they don't want you to be specific. Do you get it? They say that each animal has to have a different letter, but then it says that they can have be on the same letter. My animals are on the same letter. So me going back and forth with them, they approved Nova, my cat, but they didn't approve Willow, which I don't understand because with Nova... <laughs> With my cat, it's her presence. You know, she wakes me up. She sits on my chest. She purrs on my face. You know, all the cats do that. But Nova, no, Nova does it a lot. Now, when it comes to this chick, I don't know if you could see, but she's attached to me. Like, I can't even go throw out a pizza box <laughs> without her. And part of that is because I don't go outside. I, I don't leave the apartment block, you know? Yesterday was the first time I had gone on a walk since summer. Like, a walk off the premises, you know? And, I mean, I could blame that on my past. I could, you know, I could say this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, I'm uncomfortable. Um, usually when I go outside, you know, that's not walking my dog. I have to pack a bag. I have to pack a bag. And it's not just because I have no pockets. Hashtag female clothes are sexist. It's because I need my inhaler, my wallet, my PRNs, the prescription saying that I, ha I take PRNs because all my drugs are in like a weekly pill box with the PRNs in the weekly pill box. And I've had run-ins with cops who are like, are these all your pills? And when they really want to get snickety, they'll ask you about every single one. So yeah, my weekly pill pouch has a bag in it. I'm trying to see if I could find the other bag that has my oils in it. Oh, don't know where I went, anyway. So yeah, like I have to like pack like an actual bag as if I'm like about to backpack to Europe or something like that. So, you know, she follows me. She gives me confidence. Without her, I wouldn't be as social, like physically social as I am. I would probably just be like on the internet, you know, and never leave my house. And we're gonna, we're gonna get into other reasons why I need her and then before that I'm going to state that because I kept getting 
you know, the, the profile sent back, I was like, fuck it. She's going to be a PSD and the other one's going to be an ESA. An ESA is an emotional support animal. A PSD is a psychiatric service dog. Now, the difference between a psychiatric service dog and a regular service dog is pretty much, instead of her leading me because I'm blind, or instead of her, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. She basically helps with, you know, like I said, my social anxiety. She helps me, like when I take her out and we go to the stores, I feel less like people are staring at me. I feel less scared. I don't know what it is about me leaving the house and then becoming this like fearful bitch. Like, especially when I'm alone, I, it wasn't like this before. It wasn't like this when I was younger, you know? I could walk around and try to get lost even when I first moved in here, you know? But I guess... I guess my past kind of like creeped up on me. I, I don't know, cause there have been situ there have been situations where I wasn't allowed to go outside as an adult. You know, there have been situations where I was locked in rooms and locked in cages and shit like that. But we're not gonna go into that right now because I have therapy and I'm not about to cry during therapy. I mean, it's the best time to cry, frames, in my opinion. Like, on the morning, on Monday mornings, I have group. And the times in which I feel as though I need to go to group are the times in which I want to hide and I want to cry and I don't want to get out of bed. Like, those are the perfect times, perfect times to try opposite to emotion action and participating and things like that. Anyway, so they won't accept willow they accept nova as an esa but they won't accept willow so i'm like fuck it let's just make nova willow a psd now the difference between an esa and a psd is that my esa can stay in my house i don't have to pay anything you know other than vet stuff um that animal does not do damage um, that animal causes me to feel safe. That animal's presence alone is what helps me day to day. Can't kill myself if I got to feed my cats tomorrow. That sort of shit, you know? Now, for a PSD, instead of an ESA, an ESA, a PSD does all the things that an ESA does. However, when I am about, when I'm about to have like, I have panic attacks. I get anxiety. I have I have OCD. And the type of OCD that I have is more so uh, B BFRB, body focus repetitive behavior. And that's like, you know, chewing on the inside of my cheek, ripping the skin off my lips, peeling my skin, picking scabs, popping pimples that are barely there, pulling my hair. My haircut is actually inspired by the fact that I pull out my hair because I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. Lotto! I'm a pineapple! But anyway, this, like, I need to shave this a little bit more because these are my pool spots. These are my pool spots. And, like, down here, I I would, like, do, like, a twirl, twirl and pool. But my hair's too short to twirl, to pull. Get it? Get it? Anyway, I can't really, the only thing that I can, <laughs> the only thing that I can do to, like, stop myself from, picking when I don't notice it is to cover my skin, you know? So I'm sitting here with like barbecue sauce on my titties. No, I'm kidding. <sighs> Excuse me. So I'm sitting here and you know, to think, don't pick. Mind you, this is a cat scratch. Where is it? That was winter. He doesn't like being picked up, but he was outside. So I had to. <laughs> anyway, anyway, what's that talking about? Covering up my skin. Yeah. So like, 
I've got like, you know, the headwear and stuff like, well, not so much to have like a niqab, but like a uh, hijab, I think, the where you wrap around. So like I have scarves and stuff and I can wear long sleeves and I can wear leggings, but like I've got a, I've got a couple scarves on my back from me picking and one of them, it looked like I had road rash. It looked like I fell off a motorcycle and just skidded on my back. Now that was before we got Nova. Willow. God damn it. That was before we got Willow, I think. Since I've gotten her, I've not only noticed that when I... She lets me cry, but she doesn't let me cry. You know, like... <laughs> if I start like trying to talk like... <laughs> Mm. you know she'll usually come up she's ready she's looking at me i'm okay baby that's what i'm talking about you know she she's caught me picking before i caught me picking type stuff you know so i want to make her a psychiatric service dog i can train her to do legally in the USA, to make her a PSD, she doesn't need, like, a certificate. No. I need to train her. And, I mean, technically speaking, she, she's doing pretty good. And I don't feel comfortable being without her. I really don't. But the pet screen... And I don't... I honestly don't know what pet screening is other than a register for animals. Um... When you move into certain places, they want to see that profile of your animals. And that'll show them shot records. Um, are they indoor or outdoor animals? Have they caused prop, uh, property damage? Have they ever bitten another animal? A human? Are they fixed? A uh, microchip? You know, shit like that. That's basically, that's basically what the pet screening shows. But I don't know who approves this stuff. You know, and if I don't know who approves it, I can't sue them for not approving it. They're trying to, I, I don't know what other information they want. Where's my binder? Yes, I have multiple binders. I have to, I, my life is all over the place. And I don't know where her papers are. And that's okay. Actually, I do know where her papers are. They are on a clipboard. Now I just need to find said clipboard. Hey, look, a clipboard. <laughs> so this clipboard has on paper their vet stuff. I got a five day notice because they are aware that there are unauthorized animals in my apartment. Rabies certificate, Green Lake County, boom. Okay, so I got a let, hello. There we go. I got, <laughs> I got a letter <clears throat> from my psychiatrist. I'm going to say Dr. D because it's none of y'all's fucking business. And it says emotional support letter for me, Miss Morales. Miss Morales is my patient and has been since something 2020. She's familiar with my history and the functional limitations imposed by my mental health related concerns. Due to this emotional disability, Miss Morales has certain limitations coping with what would be otherwise with what would otherwise be considered normal, but significant day to day situations. To alleviate these challenges and to enhance her day-to-day -day functioning, I have prescribed the recommendation that her that Miss Morales's current pets, one cat and one dog, be designated as emotional support animals. The presence of these animals is necessary for Miss Morales's mental health, as her presence as their presence will mitigate the symptoms she is currently experiencing. So it says it says emotional support. It says mental health related concerns due to the emotional disability. Their presence mitigate the symptoms that I'm currently experiencing. Literally the first and last sentence of the paragraph. How more specific do I need to be? 
Do I need to tell my management, like, yo, my dog stops me from cutting myself? Yo, I have dermatillomania and trichotillomania, and my dog stops me from digging into my skin. Like, ¿Qué tú quieres? Like, the fuck? <sighs> so that's why I want to make her... I feel like you can see her better when I lift my arm. She's right there. I, I, I want to make her a psychiatric service dog. I feel like if I had her by my side 24-7, my life would be better. And not... Not so much like, oh, my dog fixes all of my problems for me and I just, no, no, no. I mean, like, she's my best friend. You know, she's she's loyal. She never talks shit unless I don't want to play with her. <laughs> you know, we we understand each other. And I'm, I'm not going to cry. I'm really not. So, I've been pregnant four times. First time, first time it was rape. Second time the condom broke. Third time and fourth time was with the same guy. And the first time it was an accident. And the second time I was... Um, It was a fourth of, fourth of July. It was uh, basically a birthday party. I celebrate my birthday on December 31st. My birthday is January 1st. Um, but everything's like closed and shit. And the guy that I was like kind of with at the time, you know, he's a DJ and he was he was doing this set somewhere for New Year's Eve. And he's like, hey, why don't you come with me? You know, and I was like, can I be my friend? Yeah, the more the merrier, you know, what the fuck ever. So, like, we were planning on doing, like, some awesome birthday stuff after we got home, after we went to his house, but, but, you know, oh, you're turning 21, oh, it's your birthday, try this, try this alcohol, it's got little gold flakes, try this, it's called jungle juice, you can't even taste the alcohol, try, do this, do this, let's do birthday shots, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm trying to turn everybody down because I don't drink, because I take drugs, I take medication. <sighs> but anyway, I am so messed up that I miss my boyfriend's set. Like, half of it. I, I went to the stage to count down with everybody because it was my birthday. And then I had to go into some frat boy's room with the coats and two other girls that were way too drunk. And he gave me a bathroom bucket so that I can bathroom in the bucket. Missed half of my boys said, um, a girl ended up puking up this bitch. <laughs> she puked on the stairs and didn't tell nobody. And I actually saw people sliding off the stairs landing in her vomit, sliding down the stairs. This shit was hilarious. It was great. I will never, ever let go of that memory. However, when we left, I was not in the right state of mind. I was not okay. I couldn't tell up from down. I didn't know where I was, where I was going. And next thing I know, I'm naked. There's a naked body on top of me. I try to, you know... Anyway... That happened on my birthday. Two, three weeks come around and my grandmother's cooking garlic and shit makes me want to puke. Like, ah, I've been having weird feelings, you know, and I can, t every time I got pregnant, I, I could like tell before I pissed on a stick, you know, or gone to the doctor's office. And... You know, I was having really bad pain. I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, Miss Morales, you're pregnant. And I was like, fuck. And my mom was in the room and she was happy and I wasn't happy. And like, if I have chosen to have sex at that time, yes, I would have, I would have been happy. Give me the baby, you know, whatever. Long story short, I was date raped and the guy made me get a divorce, a abortion, a divorce, a divorce, a divorce. I got date raped. 
I got pregnant. The guy made me get a DNC. He took me to Planned Parenthood in Chicago. All those people with their fucking signs. Even... So for Planned Parenthood, you got all these fucking people, right? And they're standing maybe a block away from... I have to take my meds. Good thing I already took my meds. So maybe like half a block away from Planned Parenthood, stretching two blocks, okay? You got protesters. And they're holding up signs of anatomically incorrect fetuses, and, you know, they're calling you all these names, this, that, and the other. And then it's a woman that comes and she's like, hey, I can walk you through all this. Do you need somebody to walk you? And I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> like, I'm a fucking baby killer. Like, yeah. Mind you, this is the fourth time I got pregnant, right? So I've gotten pregnant three times. This is my first DNC, right? Does this make sense to you? What happened to all the other babies? I should have three babies rocking around, right? Nope. Miss Miscarriage over here really loves to fucking murder babies. So yeah, I miscarried in the first trimester for the first three babies. The last one that I miscarried, they thought it was ectopic, which means I was pregnant, but the baby was not in my womb. <laughs> so it was going to be me or the kid. So when you have an ectopic pregnancy, the egg doesn't go all the way into, you know, your your womb it stays in like the fallopian tubes or you know the, the the little things on the side so anyway they checked my abdomen after they checked my pee and my blood pee said i was pregnant blood said i was pregnant ultrasound was like baby playing hide or seek or something and i was like you know what I don't want a biopsy. I don't want anything. If it's going to kill me, it's going to kill me. You know, if it travels down and I end up, you know, having a miracle fucking baby, I'm going to name it Jesus. Cool, right? Nah, baby died. So, well, it was inside. And I kind of had like a lot of blood and viscera. I'm not going to get into that right now. So anyway... The lady comes and she walks me and, you know, my guy to Planned Parenthood. Mind you, the last time that I got pregnant, before he made me get a DNC, it was his baby. And he was like, oh, we got to get married. I'm not raising no bastard children. We're going to move to Portland, blah, blah, blah. But this time, oh, well, you would be stupid to have that baby. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be there. I'm not ready to be a father. That's not what you said when I was 17, but okay. So, before, let me talk about walking inside, and then I'll backtrack. So, this lady's like, hey, you know, I can walk you, you know, to help you get past these, these protesters if you want. And I'm like, yeah, sure, thanks. Like, I kind of need a supportive hand, because number one, I'm not agreeing to this shit. I'm not okay with this. Okay? I'm really not. But I'm also not prepared to raise a bastard child. I was a bastard child. And look how I turned out. I dropped out of college. Anyway. So the lady walks us to the doors. And she talks about the blessing inside my fucking stomach. Why is everybody assuming that I'm pregnant and we're not just going for birth control? I don't fucking know. But she turns out to be one of the fucking protesters, right? Like, how dare you? 200 IQ, but how dare you? So the whole time I'm fucking crying, right? He gives me the $400. He doesn't want to walk with me to the desk to explain my situation. He doesn't want to be in the back to see what our options were. No, it was, I'm going to give you $400 and you're going to kill this baby. I'm okay. I'm okay. So in the state in the in 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 the state of Illinois, which is where I was, they don't have to show you the ultrasound. However, they have to do an ultrasound to make sure there's a baby there. Right? Right. Okay. You see where I'm going. They want to make sure that it's not ectopic, right? Right. So they do the ultrasound. And not only do they show me the fucking pictures, but it's twins. It's fucking twins. 
twins don't run in my family. They don't run in his family. I'm already, I'm already on the fucking table. So if I walk away right now, I forfeit the $400 and this guy will probably never talk to me again. And I would have to go to court to get him to support his babies. And I'm, I, I don't want to be a baby mama. You understand me? So they told me it was fucking twins and they showed me the picture and it looked like poached eggs. And I promise you, I have not had a poached egg since. After that situation, this motherfucker, right after, okay, as in like, I'm wearing what looks like a jock strap, but instead of a cup, it's like a huge fucking pad, right? And, you know, we're before the surgery, it's a couple girls in the waiting room and we're all crying and we're all talking to each other and it's monster-in-law on the fucking TV, like, I don't want to fucking watch a rom-com right before I get a vacuum in my body. And then, you know, they do the anesthesia. And this is the first time I've had anesthesia that hurted, hurt, hurt, it hurt it did. It really hurt it did. So they put it, I think right here or right here. I can't, I know. I think it was right here. And they strap, they strap me down. They put a thing in my arm and the, this girl is like, this old lady is holding my shoulder like she's doing this to my shoulder. And she's like, look at me, look at me. And I'm like, okay, okay. And she's like, we're going to give you something to ease you down. And I'm like, okay, because I'm freaking out. I'm crying. You know, I don't want to do this, but I'm scared to say I don't want to do this because I don't know what's going to happen if I don't. Okay. So they get the stuff to calm me down and I'm crying and I'm looking up at the lady and they put in... They put in the anesthesia and the anesthesia hurts like a motherfucker. Like my body is tensing up. Like it's like the opposite of morphine pretty much. And then I wake up and roll around and puke. That's, that's the first thing I remember is I roll around and I, I vomit. So then, you know, I get sent home. This motherfucker makes us take the fucking L. And if you live in Chicago you know what I'm talking about because there's only one Planned Parenthood in Chicago, like near downtown, near Logan Square by the Green Line. Okay, keep the, y'all know, y'all know? Okay, cool. So you know there's stairs, right? Instead of getting a taxi or an Uber, we had to take public transportation after I just had a surgery. Okay, a very invasive surgery. Okay, my vagina hurts. Now this motherfucker, I'm, I'm crying. I'm full of pregnancy hormones, this, that, and the other. And he's just really insensitive. He's singing, I love bad bitches. That's my fucking problem. And yeah, I like the fucker got a fucking problem. And then Jenny was, my friend was there. <laughs> She was there for me and she was very supportive, you know, and my guy brought people over to the house while I'm recovering so he can hang out and he could party with people, you know, they could do ketamine or whatever the fuck. And while they're over here partying and snorting things up their nose, I'm, I'm over here thinking in my head, not only am I a child killer, but is the stuff that they're snorting up their nose what made me feel like how I felt? Because I've, I've felt drunk before. I've had drunk sex before. But not, I've never, I've never not been there. I've, I've, dis, I've dissociated during sex before. You know, I, I was sexually um, abused a lot as a child. But I just felt so horrible. So now that you have that story, you can understand when I say I have five babies in heaven. Okay. Mind you, before I even got the DNC, I tried killing myself multiple times. Um, I overdosed three times. Didn't go to the hospital. Puke, 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 puke. And my grandma, my grandparents didn't even know I was pregnant until I was like getting ready to lose the babies. Right. So, you know, I overdose all these times and I'm just, I'm just puking. Like it's not doing anything. 
you know, like Tylenol, random, you know, like any anything that I can. I tried taking really, really hot baths and then wearing the skimpiest clothes that I could, jumping out my, I lived on the first floor, jumping out the window into the snow, you know, trying to freeze myself, jump back, back in through the window, you know, on my bedroom. You know, I'm, I'm cutting myself. I'm mixing, you know, alcohol with fucking Tylenol and all the shit, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to go like, and you know, I go to the psych ward and stuff like that. And that's where I learned about Marsha, Marsha Linehan. But anyway, I am a mother of five and they're all in heaven. Okay, like point blank. I, I never got to say hello to them. I never got to hear their voice or anything like that. I try not to make my that. I try not to make those experiences build me into who I am. However, I'm a very maternal person and I. I say that I'm maternal because I hear it from my neighbors. I hear it from my friends, you know, like, and the, the last, the last children that I lost, I was 21 and I'm 27 now. So it's been six years and you would think somebody would get over this. Which is why I don't want to be without my baby. My willow. She's the closest thing that I have. To. A child. And yeah maybe. Maybe this is unhealthy. That. I'm. Using her. To satiate my grief. But uh, I still have tro problems calling calling myself a child murderer, you know, baby killer. And I'm on birth control. Um, I was on birth control when it was an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, but that's my it's my baby. That's my baby. She makes me feel secure. She's someone that I can control, which I can't do with a child. She's just, I, I train her. I walk her. I cuddle with her. She is my life. If she were to go, if I were to lose her, like I lost Marceline, which was my other service dog. And I lost her because she couldn't stay with where I was. So I've got five babies in heaven. I lost one of my dogs. And I didn't want to lose her. Like. I don't want her to be taken away from me. I don't want to lose my best friend. No. Yes. I have a boyfriend. It's pretty cool. Super awesome guy. But it's so different with Willow. I'm not, I'm, I said I was here to fucking cry. I have therapy in 17 minutes. And I'm trying to stay calm. <laughs> I gotta stay calm. Because if I start freaking out, then she's gonna come and lick my face. Right now, I'm, I'm okay. She's okay. I'm okay. But it's like she knows. It's like she knows. You know. So yeah. I don't want to. I don't know what to do. Because I don't want to lose my dog. And she's not getting approved. For this pet screening. Due to the ESA letter. Now I've been emailing my therapist back and forth, you know, she's going to be talking to the doctor to write a note. Maybe they're going to mail it to me. I don't know, but I'm scared and I'm worried. And this, 
I had not planned about talking about the loss of my children. I just wanted to explain. <laughs> explain how much she means to me. And explain my confusion and frustration with this pet screening. <laughs> my, my next step is to try and make her a PSD. But if that doesn't work out, she is still an ESA. And if I keep getting refused, I gotta find a lawyer. I think because it's against the law. <laughs> like I'm trying to protect myself by protecting my baby. <laughs> And I honestly thought that Nova was going to do it for me, you know, but cats don't really care about you. They're better than you. you know? <laughs> like, I love them. I love Winter and Nala and Nova and Willow. I do, you know, but who helps me when I'm down? Who licks my face? Who licks my tears away? Who jumps on me and gets me out of bed the moment they realize that I'm awake? She don't give me time to sulk. <laughs> I mean, even when my boyfriend is annoying me, she protects me, you know? And I've trained her to where if you see something strange, if you see a stranger from far away, you sit. Now, I only, taught, I only taught her to sit. At first, you know, she sits when she's bored. She sits when she's just looking around. That's cool. But she's gotten to the point where she'll sit between me and whomever she's watching, which is great, you know. She listens very well on this thing. I have not used the shock collar. I can't remember the last time I shocked her. And it's set to... I just beeped her. It's set to four out of 16 for the shock and eight out of 16 for the vibration. And, you know, she's great. She's, she's something that I can love. She's something that I can possess and control. You know, when you, when you love a human, you don't possess or control a human. But when you love a dog that is yours... She, she is my property. She is my medicine. She is my love, my life. You know, she's mine, damn it. Me and Shay actually had a... I did a little experiment. Maybe a month ago. I got her in October. It's what, February now? I got her October 13th. That was the day of my biopsy. And hey, they ended up doing another biopsy. What's called a cold... A cervical cold knife conization. <laughs> because they found two like little cancer bubble thingies and that one was at 12 and the other one was at eight so 12 10 wait if this is nine then this is eight so it's 12 like that's where they found it found them there was more than one in my cervix so they did a cold a, a cervical cold knife conization and now Ooh, I mean, as of right now, I don't have any any cancerous cells in my bod. However, I haven't had a pap smear since the beginning, the end of December, beginning of February. I don't know, but I have to wait six months, and every four to six months, I have to have a special pap smear so they can check to see if the cancer grows back. But I feel like since I got a cancer dog on the day that I did the biopsy. I won't have cancer until after she dies. So that's like what, 12 years, 15 years? She's not even, in April, she'll be a year old. So yeah, we'll say 14 years. I don't even know if I can have kids. I've got, now I'm not the best at taking my medication. I really wish that I was. And I have been the victim of rape multiple times. More times than I can count. It, it, for me, it's like, at this point, it's like, it happens. Eh. Now, it's been a f I was going to say it's been a few years, but I've only dated Shay for a year. And the guy that I was with before that used to, like...
I know I was talking about my babies. I was talking about the ESAs. I was talking about my dog. I was talking about the PSD. I was talking about how I was going to talk to my therapist. I was talking about relationships. Oh, rape. Yeah, it's been at least, at least, is it February? We got together March 10th. of if I've been dating my boyfriend for damn it I need a calendar <sighs> so Shay and I got together October 1st 2020 hello 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 oh there we go oh I didn't want to do that I just want to look at my cal calendar 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 so anyway, it's been over a year because I've been with my boyfriend for a year in October. So October 2020 made it a year, which meant March 2019 to April 2019, I think was the last time I got raped. And, like, I didn't say no, but there was a gun involved. Like, like, do you want to get pistol whipped? Or, like, would you rather get fucked? Like, you can't come, but, you know, pistol whip. Penis in the vagina. Pistol whip. Penis in the vagina. I know he's got bullets in that thing, so I'm going to go with penis in the vagina. I don't know where I was going with all this, god damn it. But yeah, I have trust issues. I have relationship issues. You know, my boyfriend has not assaulted me in any way, shape, or form. His mouth words hurt sometimes, but we're working on that. My mouth words hurt him too. And my 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 fist words, let's just say that. I like to throw shit, and sometimes he's really close to me when I throw shit. <laughs> anyway. I forgot what I was talking about other than the ESA. And it's almost time for therapy. And it's a Zoom call. So I can't, I can't like be here while I do that. Oh, that's on my computer. So yeah, what am I supposed to do with this ESA PSD situation? Like I said, I, I have therapy like in eight minutes. So I'm going to talk to her about it, duh. But, like, I don't want to lose my dog. I don't want to lose her. No. No. But I'm going to go because I got to pee. And therapy starts at 10. So in order for me to feel comfortable, I have to be there at not at, 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 in two minutes. Luckily, all I have to do is, I mean, the Zoom thing is up. I just have to wait until she signs in. So thank you guys for listening to me. I'm sorry if I got way off topic or off track. But yeah, like, share, subscribe, comment. What should I do? You know, let me know if any of y'all have been through any of this type of shit. Because like, I feel like it's normal. help.